Hi, I'm Joe with Film Alliance, and today I'm going to show you how I set up my Sony ZV-E10 to get some of those cinematic shots that you've seen in my videos lately. I'm going to go through the entire menu system and show you how I set up my custom buttons and how I quickly toggle between frame rates, exposure modes, and focus modes. I'm going to take you through my function menu and show you some things that you may have not known with this camera. All of those shots were shot on the Sony ZV-E10, and it's a great little camera straight out of box, but just like every camera, it needs a few tweaks in order to take it to its fullest potential. The last thing that you want to have happen to you is you get out into the field and you're fumbling through the menu system to try to find something that you want to have. It's never good to have a block when you want to have a creative flow and so when you set your camera up like this it's best to just go out into the field and experiment with it so that you can really memorize where all of these custom buttons are and how to use each one. So I set this camera up exactly how I want it so that I don't have to search through any of the menu systems and everything that I need is right here at my fingertips. So without further ado, let's tickle the YouTube analytics by giving this video a like and we're gonna dive right in. So if you've been messing around with your settings and you wanna put your camera back to its space, then go ahead and reset the factory settings. You just go to tab five, page five, and you go to setting reset, and you go to initialize. Now I'm not gonna reset my settings on this camera because it took me a long time to get them just how I like them, but I'm gonna share with you guys how I set my camera up. Another thing you might wanna do is format your SD cards so you're starting from scratch. And the way you do that is you just go back one page, so it's tab five, page four, and you just click on format and then enter. Before we get started with the settings, here's a quick run through of all these buttons on the outside of the camera and what they do. You have a zoom rocker for your lens, you have the shutter button, you have a record button, this is your aperture wheel, you have a mode button, and you have the on and off switch. Then you have your background defocus button, and then on the back of the camera you have your menu button, your function button, your scroll wheel, your playback button, product showcase button, and also your trash can where you can throw away the images and the videos that you don't like. Now we're gonna go through the menu system and I'm gonna go pretty fast through it, so if I'm going too fast, just go ahead and pause the video and copy my settings if that's what you want to do. So now go ahead and toggle to movie mode by pressing on this mode button on the top of the camera until you see the little video camera at the very top left corner of your camera. That way you know you're in movie mode. This is pretty important because if you're not in movie mode then you might not be seeing the same settings that I'm seeing. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is press the menu button on the back of the camera and then I'm going to scroll down to aspect ratio. I'm going to make sure that's set to 16.9. If I leave it at 4.3 then you're going to have black bars on the side of your screen when you're taking videos or even shooting photos. So it's pretty important to change it to 16 by 9 because it gives you that rectangle that most screens use today. We're going to skip over page 2 and go straight to page 3 and we're gonna scroll down to where it says interval shooting function. That's used for time-lapse. Now, we're not gonna set that up right now, but I just wanted to point it out as we continued forward. Another thing to look into is this camera set memory. We're gonna come back to this because I'm gonna show you how to quickly toggle between frame rates with this camera. A quick note about the memory. The ZV-E10 only has one memory, whereas the ZV-1 has three memories. The reason why this is so important is because we want to have our three most used frame rates, which is 24 frames per second in 4K, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second, all in the touch of a button because sometimes you're in a running gun situation and you want to be able to quickly toggle between those three frame rates. And I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Another thing is it shows that we do have four other memories, which is M1, M2, M3, M4, but those are attached to your SD card and every single time you reformat your SD card, you lose those memories. So to me, it's a big waste of time. Don't even touch those four memories. Now back to the menu system. Our focus mode, we're gonna set up a custom button for that. Our focus area, we're gonna set it to wide, but we are gonna input that into our function menu so that we can have quick access to it. You're gonna go to your focus area limit and make sure that you have the center one checked because that's pretty important when you're trying to shoot something that's in the center of the frame. So. Make sure that that's checked. Face Eye Autofocus Set, if you have that grayed out, then that just means that your product showcase button is on. So go out to the main display and turn that off and then come back and you'll be able to click on it. So this is the way that I set it up and it seems to work out great for me. Autofocus with shutter on, this is great for photography. If you hold the shutter button halfway down, then it automatically focuses on whatever you're pointing at before you actually take your picture. Pre-autofocus on. Focus frame color, I turned it to red because it's a lot easier to see. And then autofocus micro adjust is something to do with A mount cameras. So tab one, page six, we set the exposure compensation inside of our function menu so we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna come back to it later. The ISO right now is set to 640, but we can adjust that with the dial on the outside of the camera. Metering mode selects which part of the screen to measure for determining exposure. 
We're gonna leave it on multi because that just determines the proper exposure for the entire screen. Now here's something important for all of your vloggers out there. When multimetering is selected and face priority in multimetering is set to on, the camera measures the brightness based on the detected areas. So what is it detecting? It's detecting your face. So if you want it to expose for your face, you wanna make sure that face priority and multimetering is on. I set my exposure step up to 0.3, so it goes up in little increments when I'm setting the exposure rather than big steps like 0.5. This is all photography stuff. So now we move on, tab one, page eight. I set my white balance to auto. If we ever get into a situation where we're having weird white balance issues, we'll custom white balance it. Priority set and auto white balance, I left that to standard. The DRO slash auto HDR set to D range optimizer. Creative style I set to standard because it gives the most realistic skin tone colors. Picture effect is pretty cool. I highly recommend you try out the toy camera, but for now we're just gonna leave that to off. Picture profile we're going to leave to off. We will come back to that in a different video. I left the soft skin effect to off. The focus magnifier I do use and I set it to two seconds. The initial focus mag to a times 1.0. Auto focus and focus mag to on, manual focus assist off, although I will turn that on because I use it a lot because it really helps when you're in manual focus, distinguish the edges of your subject by coloring the edges with whatever color that you wanna use. I use red and I make sure that the level is high and I turn the peaking display to on. Moving on, tab one, page 11, I turn product showcase set to off and I set the registration faces priority to off, all that does is you can register somebody's face that you're recording in a crowd and it will make sure that it stays focused on that face, which is pretty cool. And if you're doing documentary type style work, then you might wanna look into that one and registering your talent's face. Self-portrait timer is actually grayed out because we're in movie mode, but if you had this set, all you would do is you would flip your display around and then touch the screen and it would give you a three second timer and take a selfie picture of you. So for all of you that like to take selfie pictures, this would be an easy way to do it. All right, tab two, page one. Shoot mode is primarily where you're gonna switch between auto and manual exposure and your memory, whatever memory you pick. If your shoot mode is grayed out, that just means you don't follow good directions because you didn't change your camera to movie mode like we did in step number two. To quickly run through these shoot modes, there are several different to choose from. You have intelligent auto, which pretty much recognizes and exposes for things that you're shooting like portraits, babies, macro shots and backlit subjects, which is pretty cool, but once you get the hang of manual exposure, you probably won't use that again. Program auto is nice for running gun situations and also macro photography and videography. Aperture priority is nice because you can set your aperture however you want it. Like if you want it to be wide open so you have a nice blurry background, it will actually change the shutter speed and the ISO and locking in your aperture so you can maintain the same blurry backgrounds. Shutter priority is also nice because you can set whatever shutter speed you want and the aperture will fluctuate along with the ISO. Manual exposure is purely manual, everything at your fingertips. I'm gonna show you the different buttons that I have on the outside of the camera so I can quickly toggle between my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And then of course you have your memory, which is a quick toggle to get to whatever we set it up as and I'll show you that later in the video. You have USB streaming for those of you who like to stream. Once you hook up the cord you wanna stream with this camera, all you have to do is come here and click on this and it will connect you to your stream. File format, for those of you who are familiar with Sony cameras, namely the ZV-1, you're familiar with this menu setup. You have two different file formats you can choose from. You have 4K and HD. And if you wanna shoot in your normal 24 frames per second, which gives you that nice cinematic look, in 4K, you just click on that and then you come down to your record setting and you click on 24P100M, which stands for megabytes per second. If you wanna shoot in 60 frames per second or 1080 on this particular camera, you just have to click on the file format XAVC HD and then you can come down and you can pick between 120 and 60 frames per second. One of the most used frame rates that I use is 4K24. I use it for all my headshots and things when I'm doing documentary type of work. So I'll actually set my camera to 4K24 100M and leave it like that. So every single time I turn on the camera, that's what my camera is set up to. If you're not seeing any of these frame rates, then that means you have to set up your NTSC PAL settings up. You just go to tab five, page two, click on that, and then you can change it to NTSC or PAL, whatever you want. Now, if you go to S and Q settings, you have record setting and frame rate. 
The record setting is the output frame rate at which it will save the video as. So I changed the record setting to 24 frames per second and the frame rate in which it records at 60 frames per second. I set this to 60 frames per second because that will mean when I press on the SNQ button right here, toggling between movie mode and photo mode and SNQ, I'll quickly be able to toggle between my 24, 4K and 60 frames per second so I can quickly go between to get some nice cinematic footage and then some cinematic B-roll. If I was to just leave it at 120 frames per second, the quality is not as good as if I actually manually set the 120 frames per second. So that's why we set it to 60 frames per second. So on to tab two, page two, where on proxy recording, I leave that off because my computer can handle the files pretty well, but if your computer can't, then I would turn that on and just edit the proxy files inside of your computer so that you can edit faster. I set the autofocus transition speed to five because when you set that higher, it seems to have an unrealistic autofocus pump. And even though it's super lightning fast, I like to have things feel a little bit less jumpy. Autofocus subject shift sends, I left that to five. You can set the sensitivity for shifting the focus to another subject when the original subject moves out of the focusing area while you're shooting a movie. So I left that to five, which is responsive. Auto slow shutter, I left that to on because it sets whether or not to adjust the shutter speed automatically when recording movies if the subject is dark. The initial focus magnification I set to one and audio recording I set to on. Please don't turn that off. You don't wanna get home and realize you don't have any audio. Audio record level, I have that right now set to 20, but every single environment you go into needs to have adjustment for your audio record levels. So later we're gonna make a custom button audio record level because I use that all the time. Audio level display is on. That just gives you the little bar on your display to show you that you can actually hear the audio, but it doesn't give you an exact decibel amount. It's just used as a reference. Audio out timing, I leave it to set live. You can set echo cancellation during audio monitoring and prevent undesirable deviations between video and audio during HDMI output. So I left it to live, but it's something nice to know in case I'm having audio issues where my audio and video are not syncing up. Wind noise reduction, I left that to off. Unless you wanna completely ruin your audio, turn that on. Steady shot, I turned to active. And steady shot settings, if you're using a lens that can't communicate with your camera, then you're gonna to wanna to turn the steady shot adjust to manual and then focal length to whatever focal length your lens is. But since I'm using the kit lens that can communicate with the camera, I'm just gonna leave that to auto. Don't forget about that if you're ever using a third-party lens. Marker display, I turned off. Emphasis display during recording, that just gives you that box around the outside of the camera while you're recording. Record lamp, I turned that to on so I can ensure I know when the camera is actually recording, if I'm recording myself. And movie with shutter off. You can start or stop recording movies by pressing the shutter button, but I don't like to do that because I like to have muscle memory. And if I start pressing both buttons, then it just gets a little confusing. All right, tab two, page five. Silent shooting should be grayed out because it's only for photography and it gives you a shutter noise when you press on the shutter button. E front curtain shutter on. The electronic front curtain shutter function shortens the time lag between when the shutter button is pressed and the shutter button is released. Release without lens, I actually had to turn this on for my macro shoot because I was using a flipped around lens and the camera didn't even know a lens was on it. So I had to enable this in order to use that lens. If you're using a lens that can't communicate with the camera, you might need to turn this on or enable it in order for the camera to actually shoot. Release without a card, I leave this to disable because if I don't have a card in here, I don't wanna record and think that I'm recording and then find out that I'm not. Even though it gives you plenty of warnings, who knows, I might be in a rush and not even notice. And steady shot, I left to on. Tab two, page six, zoom range. I left it to optical zoom only. Right now I have the kit lens on here, which is a 16 to 15 millimeter lens. But if I wanna zoom right past the 50 millimeters, then I would click on that and go to digital zoom. Then that would take me about 3.5 times farther than the optical zoom. The only problem is you're not actually getting any closer. All it's doing is scaling in. So your quality will decrease the more you zoom in. The zoom lever speed changes the rate of zoom. I'm fine with the speed that it's at, which is three, so I just leave it there. I don't know what custom key Z speed is or remote speed, so I don't even touch those. Tab two, page seven, we have the display button. I click on everything except for the graphic display. Our zebra setting, I left it to off, but we're gonna actually put that inside of our function menu so we can quickly turn it on. Grid line, we're actually gonna set up in our function menu. Exposure set guide set to on, auto review. You can check the recorded image on the screen right after shooting. You can also set the display time for the auto review. I set it to off. 
All right, so now we're on to tab two, page eight, one of the most important pages in the entire menu system, which is our custom key setup. Now, even though this is a cinematic video setup for your ZV-E10, I like to set up my custom keys for the photos to match with my video so that I quickly know where each and every single button is. So for number one, which is the little trash can button down here at the bottom, I set that to autofocus, manual focus toggle, so I can quickly toggle between autofocus and manual focus when I'm out in the field. I use this button more than any button on the entire camera. I used it for all of my cameras. It's the same exact spot and it's a perfect spot to have it because that's right where your thumb is and you can quickly toggle between the two. Number two is just the middle button right here in the center of the control dial and that's basically just select, so I leave it that way. Number three is pretty important. It's shoot mode, so I can quickly toggle between program auto, manual, and my memory. Number four, I leave that to follow custom, which is actually just the ISO, so I can quickly click on it and then toggle between what ISO I like. Normally, I just shoot an ISO auto, but you never know what kind of lighting situation you might be in. Focus magnifier, which quickly punches in for about two seconds so that you can see what you're focusing on, and then it draws back to make sure that you're always in focus. The way that you change these is you simply just click on it and then you toggle to the left or to the right on whatever one you decide on. And for two of three, I changed my top number C1 right here, this button to audio record level so that when I click on that, I can actually change the audio levels that the camera is inputting. And it also gives you a more accurate reference point for where your audio levels are. So the way that I set this is I start to talk or have the subject talk and I slowly turn it up until the levels are between negative 12 and negative three. And then I can toggle out of it and now I'm back to my main display. And number two, I leave it to movie shooting because I like to have that muscle memory. For the custom key here, I leave number one to send a smartphone because it's pretty nice to be able to be out in the field and quickly send something to your phone. So now we go to function menu set, and this is the way that I set up my function menu so you can copy it if you want to. And it's pretty simple how to change what you wanna change. All you do is you just click on whatever you wanna click on, and the same thing, you just toggle through and pick whatever one you want. To run through exactly what I picked and why, I picked the touch operation because sometimes it's nice just to touch the screen on whatever you're trying to focus on and let the camera focus in. Um, peak is that peaking display when you're in manual focus. Sometimes the red lines get a little annoying when you're trying to manually focus, especially like on a well-lit area and you don't need them. So I can quickly just turn that off. My audio level display are those green bars that you see inside of the display. Sometimes they get a little obtrusive of what my frame is trying to see. So I put it in my function menu so I could turn it off if I don't wanna see it anymore. So now I have more of a frame to see what I'm shooting. I turned on zebra levels because sometimes zebras change in, depending on whatever environment you might be in. Sometimes I don't like zebras. Focus area is pretty important. I have my steady shot on my bottom left hand corner because sometimes I might not need my active stabilization. All I need is standard. I have my grid lines like I talked about before. I set this up to be grid lines in case I might be shooting somebody or something and I wanna make sure that they are in the top third of the screen. Sometimes it's hard to see in these little displays. If I had a monitor, it would be a lot easier to see. So grids always help. I have my white balance uh, set, so in case I ever need to do a quick custom white balance. I have my exposure compensation to make sure that I'm always at 0.0, .0 or less than that. I put my picture profiles in the function menu so I, I can quickly toggle between my picture profiles and also product showcase set. Even though I've never used that before, I feel like I wanna start using it, so I just put it in my function menu. You can customize this however you want. I'm just showing you how I set mine up. Now, before we go on any further, I'm gonna to explain to you how I get those three most used frame rates, the 24, 4K, 60 frames per second, and then 120 frames per second, all within quick reach of each other. So we've already talked about and set up our S and Q button to be 60 frames per second. So firstly, if I press the S and Q button right here, you'll see S and Q up here in the top left corner. And now we'll, we will be able to shoot in 60 frames per second. If I wanna just go back to shooting 24 4K, then I'm just gonna go back to movie mode, just like that. And now I'm shooting in 4K 24. So I can quickly toggle between 4K 24 and 60 frames per second in 1080, just like that. Now, if I wanted to shoot in really slow motion, like 120 frames per second, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my file format to XAVS SHD, and then record setting to 120p 100m. 
Then I'm gonna go back to my memory set, which is in tab one, page three, and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna click camera set memory. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that the number one is highlighted and press enter. So now I'm registered. So now I can quickly toggle between 24 4K, 60 frames per second, which is S and Q. And now I go to shoot mode, which is that right display button right there. And then I go down to MR1, which is my memory. And now I have 120 frames per second set up. And that's how I'm able to achieve quickly toggling between 24, 60, and 120 frames per second without having to dig through the whole menu system. So that's why it's pretty important to make sure that left toggle switch is set to shoot mode so you can toggle between program auto and manual and also your one and only memory. And now that my memory is set, I'm just gonna go back and change the file format to 4K, 24 frames per second, so that now every single time I turn the camera on, it'll automatically populate as 4K24. And I know that my memory one is 120 frames per second and my S and Q is 60 frames per second. So now I have achieved that ability to toggle between those three frame rates. Dial wheel setup, this is gonna change whether or not you wanna use this as your aperture and this as your shutter speed. I leave it like that just because I've been using the aperture with this style. Unfortunately, you can't customize this dial yet, maybe in a firmware update. But if you wanna change this to shutter speed, then you just come here and you click it over to AV TV and now this would be your shutter speed and this would be your aperture. Dial wheel EV comp, I leave that to off, but you can adjust the exposure compensation using the control dial or the control wheel if you want to. For the function of touch operation, if that's grayed out, then that just means that your manual focus is on. So I'll turn my manual focus off and now it will give me three different options. Touch shutter is grayed out because we are in movie mode. Touch focus will focus on whatever you touch on the screen and touch tracking actually tracks what you touch on the screen until it leaves the display. So I left it on touch tracking, but don't forget, we set that up in the function menu so we can turn it off if it gets in our way. Dial wheel lock, I leave that to unlock, but supposedly if you turn it on to lock, then your control wheel won't be able to do anything. I tried figuring it out, but I couldn't figure out how to get it to work. And I also use my control wheel for several different things, so I actually don't wanna lock that. And of course, audio signals I left to on. Now we're in tab three. I pretty much leave everything in this one alone, but just remember that you have airplane mode in here. And if you wanna to try to stretch your battery life as long as possible, then just go ahead and turn airplane mode on because it will disable all of the Wi-Fi connectivity that's inside of your camera. Also, I will put this in my favorites down the road so I can quickly get to it because it's hard for me to remember where all of these settings are. On to tab four, which is playback. I pretty much skip over all of this. Now we're on to tab five, which is setup number one. I set my monitor brightness to manual so I can manually set how bright my display is. Although if I'm outside, then I'll just click on that and click on sunny weather and it will make the display extremely bright. Just know that you do drain your battery fairly quickly when you're in this setting. So try to keep it at manual. And if you're inside, I use the lowest setting possible. Gamma display assist, I leave this to off, but for all of you HLG fans, this might be a useful tool to have. It actually gives you what you're seeing on the screen and how it looks in your HLG display rather than just seeing what it looks like live view. So that's something that I will put in my favorites as well. So if I'm ever shooting in HLG, I'll be able to expose properly for my HLG. Volume settings, I left this to seven, so it's right in the middle during playback. Delete confirm, I press to cancel first so that I have one more step along the way before I delete something by accident. Display quality, I left it to standard. If I turned it to high, then it would also drain the battery faster, so I leave that to standard. The power setting option, I turn that to five minutes because a lot of times I might put my camera down to get something and then I'll come back and my camera will be in sleep mode and I'll have to fumble around with it to get it turned back on. Power save by monitor both length, auto power off temp high, just like every Sony camera. You turn that to high so that your camera doesn't overheat or turn off from overheating and you just wanna leave the display open if you're ever shooting in 4K24 for a long period of time. Although I don't wanna be responsible if your camera starts to smoke. Onto tab five, page two, we already talked about the NTSC PAL selector. Cleaning mode, if you ever wanna clean your sensor, make sure to turn this on before you remove your lens so that you can really blow out any dust that might be on your sensor. Touch operation I set to on, even though it's in our function menu, doesn't really matter. TCUB settings is set for time code, and that's when you have a multi-camera shoot. Most of the time with these small cameras, you don't really ever have to deal with that. 
HDMI settings is if you have a monitor set up to your camera. As for now, I don't use a monitor because these cameras are pretty small as it is. And if I ever set up this camera with a crazy rig, then I would use my HDMI settings. But other than that, I just use the display here so I don't have to worry about it. Tab five, page three, if you ever hook up a USB to your USB port on the side of the camera and it doesn't power for some reason, just come here and make sure that the power supply is turned on. I leave it on already. Date time setup, it's pretty self-explanatory. Format is pretty important, I use it all the time. So I'll save that in my favorites menu as well. I'll show you how to do that. This is for formatting your SD card. Our SD cards get filled up pretty quick, especially when you're shooting in 4K24. So I'm constantly going to my format card before I even start to shoot. Just make sure that you have all of your files saved before you click on that. Finally, in tab six, this is my favorites menu, and this is exactly how I set up my favorites menu so that I can quickly get to all the stuff that I couldn't put in my function menu or as a custom button. You just go to add item, you click on that, and then you just toggle through whatever it is that you wanna pick, you click on it, and then you pick on my menu number one. So if you wanna copy how I did it, this is how I did it. So now to go through each one of these things, we talked about airplane mode and when you might need it, monitor brightness and when you might need it, volume settings in case we're in a loud environment and I need to turn the volume up, uh, gamma display assist because I do use HLG a lot and I like to have that functionality in the camera right at my fingertips, format because I format the SD cards all the time and metering mode to multi in case I'm in a weird lighting environment and I need to change it, I have no idea where metering mode is and I don't wanna go back and watch this video to find out where metering mode is. So I put it in my favorites so I can pick which one that I want. So now our camera is completely set up exactly how we want it. We have everything at our fingertips ready to go to quickly run through everything that we just did. I set my C1 to my audio record levels so I can change my audio when we go to different environments. And I can also see and make sure that I'm not peaking. I changed my S and Q button to 60 frames per second so that I can quickly switch between my 4K24, which is what it is when I turn on my camera, and 60 frames per second. This dial right here controls my aperture when I'm in manual exposure. The menu button stays the same, the function menu stays the same, and there's all of my settings. The top button on the control wheel is my display. One of the main things that I use the display for is to make sure that I'm balanced and make sure the camera is level with the horizon. I have my ISO, which is the right side of the control wheel, and now I can quickly toggle which ISO that I need or want. I have my focus magnifier, which is the bottom of my dial, so that it punches in and makes sure that I'm focused on whatever I'm focusing on. And then I also have my shoot mode, so I can switch in between what exposure modes that I need or want. And then I have my autofocus, manual focus, toggle right here, so I can toggle between the two when I'm out in the field shooting, and then I have my playback. So I hope this video helps you go out there and get some really good cinematic shots. The main idea behind all of my settings is to make it convenient for you so that you don't have any blocks or stoppages when you're trying to be creative. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm Joe with Film Alliance, and until the next video, peace.